Hello. Happy November. This is the first time that I I'm filming in November. I know a video went up uh, for y'all last week when it was November, but this is my first November film. So happy November. It really feels like winter is starting, uh, at least in Colorado where I live. We've already had our first snowstorm. Temperatures are dropping and I don't know about you all, but my Target was already playing Christmas music. I've seen so many Christmas decorations, people already setting up their decor. So it kind of feels like winter is being fast tracked this year. So today I thought that I would kind of jump on that bandwagon and uh, discuss my winter knitting plans for the 2023 through 2024 season. So let's just get into it. All right, so my winter 2022, or oh my gosh, 2023, 2024 knitting plans. Um, before we get into it, I do have a couple things I wanna talk about. First of all, the thing I'm wearing, I finished this in, I believe July. It is the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. So it's got the beautiful shoulder shaping. Um, I knit this in Petal Perch, which I actually have a whole skein of um, by The Yarn Addict. So the color is Petal Perch. It's their free range, non super wash base and um, one strand of Drops Kid Silk Mohair, which I don't remember the color of, but if you are interested, all the details are found in my Ravelry, which is linked below. So that's what I'm wearing. I love it. Um, since I finished it in the summer, I haven't gotten a lot of chances to wear it. So it's nice to finally bring it out and I think I'm really gonna enjoy it this winter. One problem with it is, um, it's in mohair and this garment is what made me realize that I um, am quite sensitive to mohair. So now anything with fluff is Surrey or another alpaca kind of base for me. Um, but I am just wearing a long shirt under this cardigan and I can wear it fine like that. So yeah, that's that piece. Um, another thing I wanted to quickly ask or talk about is um, I would love to hear some feedback from you all. I know I've been on YouTube for a few months now and um, seen some growth, which is great. And I, you know, recognize some people that comment or have come over to my Instagram and I really, really appreciate that. And um, as I kind of continue to film, I want to improve my quality, improve uh, whatever I can, make it more engaging, interesting. So I would love to hear uh, in the comments below if you have any feedback for me about video topics you would love to see in the future. Um, if there's anything about my filming setup, I do just film on my iPhone and edit on an iPad. Um, so if there are ways that, you know, if the sound quality is off or something about the camera could be better, please let me know and I can kind of look into improving that. Um, so yeah, I would love to hear some feedback from you all. Um, and continue to just make videos that you enjoy. So <clears throat> those are kind of my disclaimers or <laughs> starting off things. And now let's get into it. Um, the first thing before I actually talk about what I want to make for winter is to quickly do a review of my fall knitting plans. So I have my list of all the patterns that I wanted to knit this fall and I did pretty good on it. I did, um, five out of eight, so over half. Um, so on that list were the Forever Autumn Leaf Socks, which is patterned by Stone Knits. Um, I don't really wanna put all of them up on the screen <laughs> because that'll be a lot, um, but you can refer to that video. I'll also have the list with all the links down below. Um, Forever Autumn Leaf Socks, I guess I could put up FO pictures. Fine, I will do that. Forever Autumn Leaf Socks, um, which I did finish. The I thought about making a cumulus blouse, but I instead test knit for um, Coley of Paisley, Paisley Knits and made a Kalani blouse with um, some Camaro's Midnight Soul, um, the Athens cardigan, which I finished and made a whole video about, I'll have a picture here as well, um, the wood nymph, wood nymph Socks, which is a This Handmade Life pattern, it's a free pattern with um, a really nice simple lace detail, did not knit those. Um, I my sock mojo just kind of evaporated. I knit a lot of socks in a row in the summer. So I think this, this fall, I just really was not feeling socks. So they'll tentatively be on my winter list if I get sock mojo, but I think socks for me are more of a spring fall or spring summer knit. So moving on, 
cardamom sweater. Um, this is by Twin Knits. I still love this pattern. Um, I almost cast it on a few times, but I ended up not because um, I am wondering if I want to make something else with the yarn and I'm waiting to see when that pattern comes out. That's part of my winter plan. So that was very vague, but you'll hear more in a second. The weekend hat um, baby edition. I did make that. Uh, so I'll have a little photo. Um, very cute. And that, that was for my coworker, not me. Um, the Marissia cardigan, which I cast off today. I will have a little picture. Um, it, it might be on the blocking mats in the picture, but it's done and I'm excited to wear it tomorrow or maybe two days. Um, it's kind of thick. And then the Friday slipover was the last thing on my list and I have not cast that on. It's just been moved to my winter knitting plans. So five out of eight. Um, and I did also start my gift knitting during this time. So I really didn't deviate from this list for garments or accessories for me, um, but I also added in some gift knits. So I think during the fall time period, I did knit about nine pieces. I think I have nine finished objects from the fall season. Um, some of them are a lot less complex, like a, a hat or um, a pair of socks for a friend, but yeah, I feel accomplished in that. I think that reflecting on my fall knitting plans has made me consider maybe instead of calling my winter ideas knitting plans, because um, that puts some pressure to actually get them done, accomplish them. Maybe I want to call it like my winter knitting menu or my winter knitting catalog, cabinet, I don't know. Um, if you have a better word for that, but essentially, um, I'm thinking instead in terms of these are the things that I want to knit, having kind of just this is the list that I can pull from um, based on what yarn I have and all of that. Um, so my winter knitting list is actually longer than my fall knitting list. Um, and I was kind of feeling bad about that because I was like, I should have learned my lesson. I didn't even knit all the ones on my fall list, but I don't want to feel limited to only put things on that. I know I can accomplish because part of the fun of knitting is chasing a high from a cast on or chasing like the enjoyment of a cast on. So I want things that are inspiring me now um, and I want a lot of options so that if one of them stops inspiring me, um, you know, I have something else on my list. So we'll see what I get through this winter, but without further ado, I think we should finally actually start talking about my plans. So I have them in a rough order of when I'll do them. Um, it'll probably change, <laughs> um, but you know, this is what I'm thinking right now. And I do want to put a note out that I'm kind of saying fall knitting has ended after this Marissia cardigan. Um, and winter knitting will probably honestly not start until around Thanksgiving time, which in the US is the end of November. So about it's the 11th it's the 12th today so about two three weeks of buffer between those two and in that time I'm doing a sample knit and then I'll probably focus on um gift knitting as well so starting November or Thanksgiving end of November um through say the end of February is kind of my winter knitting timeline um so the first thing on my list is the Friday Slipover V-neck. So this is a pattern by Petite Knit. Um, it was on my list last plans video as well, but I am determined now to get it done. I think just the, um, sorry, I'm trying to grab my yarn and it's getting stuck on something. The, the color palette threw me off from casting it on during the fall season. It's um, not fall colors, but I think that now that it's kind of shifting towards a winter color palette, I am excited to cast this on. So it's the um, Petite Knit Friday Slipover V-neck. I'll have a picture of the pattern here. And then the yarn I'm planning on using is, are these three. So this, I'll just go through them. This is the star of the show. This is the Explorer Knits and Fiber Surrey Alpaca Base um, in the colorway Joshua, Nash Joshua Tree National Park. I love it. I love all the colors in here. Um, so pretty. And then as my base, I'm using Knit Picks Gloss in just the bare, um, bare colorway. So no dye. Um, it's a nice, what is it? 70% merino wool, 30% silk. So I think that this will give 
really nice drape and like a little bit of temperature regulation not a lot it's still mostly wool but just a little <laughs> um a little bit to help me um wear a slipover more practically um because obviously it's not gonna keep you warm all over it doesn't have sleeves but you don't want it to overheat your chest so i think this will be a good combo um and then for all the edging i'll be using this drops brushed alpaca silk um the color is 20 i think it's powder pink um so the three of these together are gonna be really nice um for a little slipover in the past i've talked with um hannah of pages and pearls about doing a little mini knit along with the um friday slipover so I'll probably reach out to her soon to see if she would be interested in doing like a late November, early December cast on, but I also think she has a million things going on. So we'll see. Um, if I end up doing it alone, that is fine too, but it's always fun to knit with a friend. So yeah, that's my first plan. The second thing I'm thinking of is um, a hat of some kind for me. Um, I have this yarn, so I already showed this. This is the Petal Perch. It's the exact yarn I'm wearing um, by the Yarn Addict. I bought an extra skein of this yarn when I was knitting this. This is really cropped, but still have an extra skein. And I'm thinking I want to make a hat and hold this with it to make a really cozy hat. Um, I also think it's a good idea to hold this with it because I would love to have enough extra yarn to make little mitts. I don't know if that's really feasible, but I figured my luck is better if I, you know, knit a DK weight hat by holding these two together with fingering. This is fingering. So I have 437 yards. Um, so the patterns I'm thinking of are the Iris hat, um, which is a Sari Nordland pattern. I actually already own this pattern and I knit it up just a couple weeks ago for a gift. Um, I knit it with just a DK weight yarn, uh, but she does have instructions in the pattern for making it with um, a fingering and a mohair, or a fingering and a fluff, I should say, or lace weight. And then I could also make an Oslo hat, uh, mohair edition by Petite Knit, but I don't know if I would love sewing down the collar or the, the brim, and I don't, I don't know. I think that I would enjoy the stretch of the ribbed hat. So I'm probably going to go towards the iris hat, plus I already own the pattern. Um, I'd originally thought of making a muscle burrow hat in this, but I think that if I make a muscle burrow, I definitely will not have enough yarn for mitts, and I would love something coordinating um, for this season. Um, I've also really been wanting some fingerless mitts lately. Um, my office is always freezing, so I'd love something to wear there. So. It's my next project, um, TBD on the exact pattern, but definitely hat in this yarn. Um, the next thing on my list, and this might go later down, we're probably getting pretty close to Christmas at this point with a hat and a slipover, um, and I need to knit these before Christmas, the next one's before Christmas, but anyways. Um, I want to make the November jacket by Petite Knit in this yarn. So this is the Happy Chain yarn by um, We Are Knitters. I This is probably my longest standing stash yarn at this point. Um, I mean, I guess I have some acrylics, but that I would use. Um, I bought this, must have been around Christmas last year. Um, I just bought it in a kit to make one of the We Are Knitters patterns, but I since don't really like panel knitting and it was a panel knitting kit so i have a sweater quantity of this yarn that i would really like to use up um it's a chainette yarn so you can see it's kind of chainy um which means it's nice and stretchy um really cozy light um and it it's 100 percent wool it doesn't say made in peru so i don't know if it's a highland it's like not quite as soft as a merino so maybe it could be a highland but I don't know, it's chainette yarn um, in this nice pink color. So I think that the November jacket would be really nice in it. Um, I'll have a picture up. I think it is brioche stitch. It's either brioche or fisherman's rib, but I'm pretty sure it's brioche, um, which I've done before. So not intimidated by it. Um, and then this would be out of my stash because this takes up so much room. A sweater quantity of this air and weight really fluffy yarn is just really bugging me um, and it's beautiful. I would love to use it, but honestly I need it out of my stash. So 
needs to get used. So that's the last, I think I put it higher on the list simply because it's called the November jacket and I would love to be working on it in the month of November. Um, but I need to make sure that I'm still getting my gift nets and Christmas stuff done. So we'll see when that gets cast on, but yeah, November jacket. Uh, the next two things I'm thinking of are fun for me. They're complete dopamine Christmas time knitting projects. Uh, the first thing I would love to make are some festive minis um, out of a lot of the mini yarns I have. So I'm just grabbing some of them to show. I have so many mini skeins. Um, they're just really fun. I don't know. I just, just kept end up kept buying mini skeins um, for a while. And so these are just the ones that are still in their hank form. I have some that I've dove into and have like a little bit of a ball or a cake left um, that are just stored somewhere else. So I didn't feel like I needed to grab those too. And I have some scraps from sock patterns and other stuff. So need to use them um, and want to have some fun with some color. So I'm thinking first of all of making the Tiny Tree Socks by Summerlee Knits, um, or Summer Summerlee Designs. Yeah, Summerlee Designs, um, I'll have a photo up. It's a free pattern. I downloaded it about a year ago, so I'll make sure that I can still link it. Um, but they're really fun. They're just tiny little socks um, that I think I want to use primarily as gift tags. Um, so I want to make some, I'm going to my aunt and uncle's this year with my mom for Christmas. And so I would love to make them little socks to put on their presents that have their initials on them. So, you know, to kind of mark the presents. And I think that they would really enjoy that. Um, they love tiny things, so as do I. So I think that that'll be really sweet um, and do that for some friends as well. Um, I also love the tiny gilded Christmas jumper pattern by Fable, Fable Knitwear. Um, this is beautiful, also a free pattern. I just downloaded it and I love that. She has instructions for embroidering um, a letter on it. So I want to do that as well. I also think that this, we'll see how many I make and how much I enjoy it. I definitely want to prioritize uh, making the ones that I will use to attach to gifts. Um, but I also think that would be really cute to have some on our Christmas tree. As you all have seen, if you watch me, I have two cats, <laughs> one of them still a kitten and kind of crazy. Um, and they both love climbing the Christmas tree. So I cannot have any breakable ornaments um, in case they knock the tree over. So I think that knitting some ornaments would be really sweet. So we'll see if I can get around to that um, or if I even enjoy knitting such tiny little objects. Um, you know, it's all DPN, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but definitely some of those at least. Um, and those should be like a quick afternoon project. Um, even though they're a tiny gauge, it's, you know, that big. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, the other thing that I want to do with all my minis is to make a triangulum blanket. Um, I should have written down who this is by, but it'll be on the screen and in the description down below. Um, a little while ago, I was scrolling on Instagram and saw someone's version of a triangulum blanket that is just stunning. I think I have it saved, so I'll put up a picture if I can, but essentially the triangulum blanket is worked with a bunch of little triangles where you join, I think it's a selvage edge, I'm not totally sure, but you join, well, you cast on one little triangle, decrease it down, um, so there's a point in the middle and then you just keep joining onto that until you kind of have a hexagon. You can either work in stripes or like rows or hexagon. So I'm planning the hexagons and then you just keep attaching more hexagons together. Um, I saw someone who makes amazing knit and crocheted blankets that look like quilts, um, but are knit or crocheted. So they Play with color a lot to make a lot of quilting motifs as far as a lot of the stars you see in quilting through knit slash crochet um so they're stunning and their version of um the triangulum blanket is just amazing um so they have the hexagons 
um, all in like different colors. So it's, it's all in warm tones. So it's like a pink hexagon with like little points coming off of it in the same color. So it makes like a star um, and it's like a six pointed star. And then there's a bunch of white around it and then like another one. So it's really cool. I'll put up the picture if I can, but definitely inspired me. And I think that I went and bought the pattern and calculated and one of these each, so 20 grams um, of fingering weight yarn will get one hexagon out of it. So I think that I wanna do something with that um, and just enjoy making a bunch of little hexagons over my Christmas time um, and enjoy time off and doing that. So yeah, we'll see how far I get on it. Um, that definitely is not, the goal is not to finish that, it's just to start it and have fun with it. So maybe something with an advent with it. I don't know, we'll see how long they take. Um, but yeah, uh, and I mean advent as far as knitting like one a day, not opening an advent of yarn because unfortunately did not get myself a yarn advent this year. Very sad. Um, but yeah, those are kind of my two Christmas dopamine-esque cast-ons um, that I'm looking forward to. The next thing that I will be knitting is another either or pattern. So either the blouse number one light by My Favorite Things Knitwear, photo on the screen, um, or the light loop high neck by other loops. So originally I bought this yarn, well, I didn't buy this yarn fully. I um, I sampled it for Poppy, Spru Poppy and Spruce Fibers and so as payment, I got a credit for her store. And so I used that credit to get two skeins of this Surrey yarn. Um, it's in the colorway Fuzzy Blanket. And when I bought this yarn or acquired this yarn, I was planning on making the blouse number one light. Um, it's the same as the blouse number one, um, which my favorite things released over <clears throat> the summer. Um, so it's kind of a boat neck. It's got some nice short row shaping. Um, it's pretty casual. I think that all of the edges are just like raw edges. So they roll up and look like eye cords, but it's just um, the raw edge. So that was originally made for, I think maybe a DK weight yarn um, with summer fibers. Um, but then she released another version where you use fingering or a lace weight instead. So um, I bought two skeins of this and I thought... It, it's not quite enough for the pattern as is, but it's Surrey instead of mohair. So I'm thinking maybe I could just hold single instead of hold double. I also, the reason I wanted to make this pattern is to wear under overalls. So I saw, or my favorite things knitwear styled it with um, kind of over or under a pair of overalls and it looked so cute with the sleeves and like the way it was just really flattering. So I'm not super worried about it being see-through. Um, so I might still go that route, hold it single, but um, also other loops just released this light loop high neck pattern, which even though it's a turtleneck, the gauge is so loose that I have enough yarn for it and it's meant to be held single. So that might be a really good option. Um, and I'm just kind of debating between those two, but either way, very excited to use this yarn. It's so soft and um, it really fits into my winter color palette. I think making this kind of right in the new year will be really lovely. Um, for some reason, color to me just like looks like January. <laughs> so would love to be wearing it in the month of January. We'll see. Um, the next thing on my list is a another either or. Um, you can see I have a lot of I think I based my winter knitting plans more around yarn I would like to use than specific patterns. So a lot of these have been inspired by this yarn was in my stash. What would I like to make with it? Um, rather than, I love this pattern. I'm really excited about all of these patterns, um, but I'm definitely thinking more of a yarn driven approach. So that's why there are more either or patterns here. Um, I don't have the yarn for this one already, but I, I'm currently sample knitting for Explorer Knits and so um, I'm knitting a sweater for her and or for them, their business. And so as payment for that or yeah, payment, um, I get a an equal amount of yarn um, for myself. Uh, so it's a sweater, so I get a sweater quantity. Um, 
I'm very excited. I'm already kind of thinking about what I would like to do even though I just finished my gauge swatch. Um, but I'm thinking that I'll probably want, it's, I got five skeins for making the sweater. So that means I get five, five skeins. Um, and I think that I want to get three skeins of their non-superwash fingering base and then buy one other skein to get three skeins of their Surrey base and get it on one of their amazing tonals. I don't know um, exactly which colors I'm allowed to choose. I think they're just custom dyeing it for me, um, which is very exciting, but there's still a lot of unknowns, but essentially I'm hoping that I can get a tonal sweater quantity in both fingering and Surrey from Explore Knits. And then I either want to make the Edgar sweater, which photo here. Um, if you watch my uh, winter knitting inspiration video, one of the things that I talked about was really wanting a garment with a split hem. And so I really like that the Edgar sweater has a split hem. I also already own this pattern. Um, so that would be nice to actually knit a pattern I own. And then the other thing I'm interested in knitting is the Olive Cardigan by, or by Knitting for Olive. Um, I bought this pattern a couple weeks ago, maybe a week ago, when they were having their... Um, they had a sale for any pattern donations were donated or any pattern purchases were donated and matched to UNICEF. So I bought a few patterns, including the Olive Cardigan, which is also another fingering plus lace. So either of those would be really beautiful. And I think I'll just have to decide based on my wardrobe and what I'm feeling. Would I rather have kind of a mock neck sweater or a um, cardigan? So we'll see what I end up making um, and we'll see what color I end up going with or if I'm fully wrong on what the the terms of our agreement are. So we'll see what I end up getting, but um, I'm very excited about that. I'm very happy to be working with Allie and Darren and the rest of the Explorer Knits team to knit this up. And I'm excited to then be able to knit something in their wonderful yarn for myself. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then last two things the second to last thing that i'm thinking of knitting is um well originally i planned on making the cardamom sweater um with these two yarns so this is a zakami surrey base the color is the akashic records um and it's their surrey um this is a great great business uh they're based out of edinburgh it's such beautiful yarn so i originally wanted to make the cardamom sweater in it and this is just knit picks palette um, in the color almond. So very nice. Um, so it's a fingering and a lace. I thought of the cardamom sweater. I still might make the cardamom sweater, but I'm kind of holding off from casting on because um, Penrose Knits or Laura of Penrose Knits um, made a little while ago this sweater that I just love. She calls it her Appledore sweater. That is the yarn she knitted in. And it's kind of this crosshatch design. I'll have a picture up. Um, and I, I watch her YouTube and I'm subscribed to her Patreon. And so I, I watch her pretty religiously and she's been talking lately about kind of her schedule of when she'll, um, she'll next, um, release certain designs. And it seems like maybe the Appledore sweater is coming up, um, and that she might, um, do a public or maybe Patreon limited test call. And so I would love, I really love her. <laughs> I would love to test it for her because I just really like her. Um, I would also love to knit a pattern of hers. So if she doesn't do a public test call or if she does and I'm not accepted, I still probably will knit the pattern. Um, but it would be cool to work with her just because I really admire her. So um, I'm kind of saving this sweater quantity for now until I see you know, if that's coming out soon, because it would be really beautiful to have the variegated Surrey um, in that design, I think. So just kind of holding off on that. So it's kind of at the later of the list to see, you know, when it might come out. I know it's definitely after Christmas. So yeah. And then finally, I'm thinking of, and I keep kind of chickening out of this, but I would love to make my own pattern. So I have this sweater quantity um it's just three skeins of the pearl soho good wool and this is in the color winter grass it's one of their undyed bases and i would really like to 
did something for myself with this. Obviously I bought it, um, but I think that I want to make my own design with it. Um, here, I have a swatch here actually. I, a couple weeks ago, swatched for something potentially and um, have these two little swatches. This is called a sand cable. Um, this is actually, I was doing the sand cable wrong, but I actually kind of like how this one looks more with it flowing that way. Um, but essentially I want to make something just to test myself as a knitter to self-draft pattern. Um, but I also really like the look of kind of subtle, subtle cable, cables where they're not outlined by pearls. Um, you know, it's all just right side stockinette um, and then you just move them um, or cable as normal. So I would like a sweater like that and I couldn't find a pattern like it. So I figured maybe I'd make one, but I keep kind of getting intimidated um, as far as, you know, committing to figuring out all the math, um, figuring out the cable design, not having something to rely on. So it's kind of at the end of my list just to let me practice a few more garments before I make my own. Um, if I end up not wanting to make my own, I think that this would also, I actually originally bought this to be an Elizabeth blouse or by Petite Knit photo or um, either the Paloma or Classic, which are both two turtleneck designs by A Space Street Co., uh, which are both free patterns, by the way. Very nice patterns. Um, so yeah, lots of possibilities with this. I also have a sweater quantity of this yarn because I made a mistake um, and thought this would pair nicely with the other yarn in my Mauricia cardigan and it just didn't. Um, this was way too light to go with. Um, this is the color of my Mauricia cardigan. So it, it just didn't look good. So I ended up with an extra sweater quantity of this. Um, so I think it might be nice to hold these together, but I need to swatch for that um, and we'll see. So yeah, lots of potentials. Um, I feel good about my kind of winter catalog of patterns. Um, I'm excited to knit up the yarn that I have. I think my stash has definitely grown more than I would like it to lately. So I want to focus next few months on just knitting it down a bit. Um, back to a more knittable level for me. Um, so yeah, gonna be focusing on that for the next few months and excited to knit up these garments. I, I really can't wait for the Friday slipover. I think it's gonna be really pretty. Um, but yeah, excited about everything, which is a great feeling. And we will just see what comes and I am not going to feel bad or guilty if I only knit three of these um, when I check back in in the springtime. So let's just enjoy our knitting together. Um, I hope that you are enjoying the end of fall, start of winter. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I guess it's the start of summer. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, um, but I hope you're just enjoying whatever season you're in physically and mentally. Um, 